bug out bag firearms. There's a lot of debate about the handgun versus the rifle versus the shotgun, or maybe you should have something totally different. Maybe you shouldn't even have a firearm. Maybe you should go something a lot more primitive. But let's go ahead and step back, though, for a moment and look at some philosophies of personal protection before we get into that big debate. The first thing that I want to say is that a layered system is going to be much more ideal. Uh, you can handle and uh, basically deal with a lot more situations, a lot more diversity of situations, really, when you have various types of capability. Instead of just one tool, you have several tools. Now, a layered system, though, may include lethal and non-lethal. So you may have a firearm, but you may also have, like, pepper spray or pepper gel. You may have something that keeps someone at distance. You know, maybe it's a, a flashlight with a strobe, so at night you kind of disorient someone. Maybe you have a staff that you can keep and push people away so they don't get within arm's reach. And maybe as a last resort, you have uh, some type of uh, a blade that you can pull from and use. So a layered system is very smart. In a high threat situation, you may want to even have uh, body armor of some type. And you can kind of go with that uh, as far as you can go. I mean, there's all kinds of accessories and various tools and upgrades for anybody's personal protection. But it's something to think about, a layered system for sure. The next part of this is being low profile, not standing out and doing the gray man tactics. I think that's really important for us to remember that if we're bugging out, we don't want attention. We want to avoid confrontation and hot zones. We don't want to like walk right into the middle of a city that's uh, chaotic and you know there's riots breaking out and there's mobs and gangs uh, uh, killing people. We want to go around the city. In fact, not only just around the city, but we want to avoid the whole area. Even the outskirts of the city, we probably don't want to hang around. We want to go well around the whole area. Now, when it comes to firearms, we have accessories and uh, even like the big debate about how much ammunition and what calibers and all this stuff. I mean, there's a lot to this. But what I can say for me personally, though, unless it's a very high threat situation that I almost know for certain that I'm going to encounter someone that's hostile between where I am and my bug out location, I'm not going to take a long arm. I'm not going to take a rifle or shotgun. Just not going to do it. It's going to slow me down. I want to be as fast as possible. I want to be light on my feet. So a handgun is going to be the best way for me. And I'm thinking like a semi-automatic handgun. It's going to be you know, just the most logical thing, you know, that I can think of. So something like maybe like a, a Glock 19 or maybe even something a little smaller, maybe a Glock 26. But something like that would be awesome, you know, that can be concealable, uh, that can be uh, accessed when you really need it, but it's not going to be seen by someone that's just walking by, you see. So in terms of, of accessories, what should you have on your gun? Uh, well, if it's a it's a firearm that is going to be concealed, then um, you can still have things like a, a light, uh, a laser. That's up to you. I'm not too big into lasers, but definitely a light. I'd have a light on your pistol or a shotgun or a rifle, anything that you're going to have. Have a light at least. And if it's a long arm, definitely have some type of retention device, you know, like a, a sling of some type. And if, if you don't like slings and maybe the the firearm is in your backpack or something, um, then just take it off. But at least have it in case you need it. In terms of ammunition, I would say for a, a handgun in a very low threat situation, maybe like two or three magazines. I think that would be pretty good, um, especially if it's a short distance that you're traveling. Now, if it's many, many days or maybe even a week long, you, you may want to go a little more, but that's that's pretty good, two or three magazines. Now, in high threat situations, you'd probably go with a long arm, and you probably would want to have some type of chest rig or plate carrier system. Uh, you may not have actual you know, body armor on your person. You may, uh, but you have to be mindful of the weight of that. It can get pretty crazy in terms of the weight. 
but you may want to have some type of, of system to hold your spare magazines and have your ammunition. Uh, in terms of ammunition, I don't know. Uh, if you have like an AR-15, I'd probably have maybe like four to six magazines um, and a handgun with three or four magazines. And that would be kind of a pretty good loadout because you got to consider you have a backpack and you have other things with you. Um, it just depends on the situation. I mean, if we just got invaded by China um, and it's an all-out war, you know, a ground war, then I'm probably going to take as much as I can physically handle carrying. So it might be six to eight magazines in a few boxes spare, you know, of ammunition that I can reload those magazines. Now, in terms of the actual firearms itself, I'm more of a fan of, once again, the handgun for more low-key situations that are going to be low threat. Um, in terms of the shotgun... I don't know about that. I mean, it, it definitely can be used, um, but I would go with a lightweight rifle would be my next preference, uh, mainly just because of the fact that uh, you can kind of reach out and connect with people that may be a threat at a distance. So I would definitely have at least some type of scope system um, or a red dot, but most likely a, a scope. And um, it doesn't have to be really powerful, but just enough that you can kind of see out at least a few hundred yards and uh, be able to tag whatever it is. And, um, you know, and it's not just that, you know, humans could be threats and that's why we need a firearm. It could be there's dangerous animals between where you are and your bug out location. So, you know, keep that in consideration. Now, when it comes to like more primitive means, a lot of people will debate, hey, it's a lot better, though in terms of weight and just uh, maybe even the the fact that it can be quiet uh, or more quiet than other firearms and stuff that have like a bow, you know, just like a regular traditional longbow or uh, even a crossbow. Now, some crossbows can be kind of bulky and heavy, so it just depends on the one you're looking at. Some people say even go even more primitive and go with a type of spear that you can throw. Of course, you're going to have to have skills to, you know, to be able to throw and hit what you're, you're throwing at. Uh, some people say you just have a nice machete. And so there's all kinds of different um, uh, preferences there in terms of more primitive means of protection. But the reason that I like firearms, and uh, if it's something you can get in your area and it's legal, then maybe have some kind of sound suppressor if you're worried about noise. But I like the ability to have the the reach and to, to reach out and to uh, make contact with people that are threats. And I like to create as much space between me and the threat. So uh, firearms, in my opinion, do a really good job of that. It's not that you can't get some distance with a crossbow or a traditional bow, but it's going to be a little slower in some ways in terms of uh, reloading, if you know what I mean. And uh, also the potential um, to be as accurate as you could possibly be with a, a good uh, scoped rifle, you know. And I'm sure you can be very accurate with crossbows and, and traditional bows. I have no doubt. I know people who are very accurate, but there is a limitation, though, you know, and there's a power factor of, of those particular weapons. And you go too far out and you got a lot of variables that can mess with your your accuracy and um, and also just the ability to take down whatever you're trying to hit. So, yeah, uh, what is the best bug out firearm for you? Um, for me? Just a compact handgun with a few uh, spare magazines. Uh, but during a high crisis, high threat situation, definitely a rifle with a few spare magazines. And, uh, you know, in terms of the rifle, I think that I would probably go with a very lightweight AR-15. Um, that seems like that would be a good way to go. Some people uh, recommend maybe an AR uh, type or uh, configuration, you know, in terms of a pistol, you know, that's an AR um because, you know, you can do a lot with the magazines. And uh, it's always a possibility. You know, if, if an AR-15 rifle is too big, go with an AR uh, pistol. It's up to you. But um, a lot of people don't have, you know, AR pistols. And so you kind of just use what you have. And um, those are my thoughts on the best bug out firearms. Thanks for watching.